choices. The wizarding world is full of them, but none are more consequential than if you're a witch or wizard that dabbles in the dark arts. Hey there, friends. My name is Kodiak. This is Legacy Gaming. Let's get started down the path of no return and embrace the three unforgivable curses in Hogwarts Legacy. Anything worth getting is, of course, locked behind some kind of requirement. Well, these spells are no different. If you want to unlock the three unforgivable curses in Hogwarts Legacy, you're going to have to progress one of the game's relationship storylines, as well as meet certain level requirements. Patience is the name of the game here, but with a little understanding of the various layers to unlock such powerful spells, you'll be well on your way. I want to start out by making it clear. Your house choice does not affect these spells in any way, nor do any of your choices before level 16. Sebastian Sallow will be your guide as he's the key behind your dark arts path. All his quest names begin with In the Shadow Of, and there are four required story quests from him throughout your journey. But at level 16 is where you can choose to venture off the written path and pursue the three curses as side content. Here's the thing about relationship chains. You'll get most of them via owl mail, and some are just simple conversations. In this case, keep a watchful eye out for any owl mail from Sebastian. As long as you've opened the mail or talked to Sebastian after hitting level 16, you'll receive the specific relationship quest in the shadow of the study. Complete this to learn Crucio, or the Torture Curse, the first of three unforgivable curses. Crucio is feared amongst wizard kind for inflicting intense and excruciating physical pain on its victim. It will come in handy as another crowd control spell and, in addition, will leave your target cursed, as indicated by these green X's. These curse marks can be amplified further by spending spell points in your Dark Arts talent tree. Like all the unforgivable curses, Crucio is tied to a lengthy cooldown, so you want to make sure you optimize talent points for Crucio and curse targets where you can. As you've just received Crucio at level 16, you're able to spend points in the second tier of talents. We recommend spending a point in Crucio Mastery, which releases projectiles when you strike a target that's been cursed by Crucio. These projectiles will curse additional targets, spreading Crucio to nearby enemies. We'd also recommend Enduring Curse, which makes the existing curses on enemies last just a bit longer. Finally, a must-have as you build out your Dark Arts toolkit is Blood Curse, which deals damage to all cursed targets when damaging an already cursed target. You can see all the synergy here, and it's worth saving up a few extra points as you level to have ready for when you start to unlock these unforgivable curses. After learning Crucio, you'll receive more Owl Mail from Sebastian. You'll need to complete these tasks before the next quest from him. Once you hit level 17, Sebastian will call you to once again aid him in his pursuit of knowledge. Look out for the quest in the Shadow of Time. Complete this, and you'll be given the option to learn Imperio, dubbed the Mind Control Curse. Imperio is an interesting spell as it gives the caster control over the affected enemy. But it doesn't give you complete control. Rather, it bids the enemy to fight for you, targeting other enemies and using spells and abilities in their own skill table to do so. The mind-controlled enemy will do this automatically, so there's nothing for you to manage here. There are, again, specific spell talents to enhance this even more. A point should be spent on Imperial Mastery, which allows enemies already under your control to curse other enemies they hit. As you continue to explore this path, you may start to notice a theme with the Dark Arts Tree, and that it all revolves around spreading curses to any target that you can. You want to begin thinking about how this works in larger groups of enemies, and how best to spread your curses around to as many targets as possible. As the first two curses are so close together in level requirements, you might expect to unlock the third and final curse sooner rather than later. But alas, you're going to have to wait until level 28 to fully unlock the Deadly Trio. It sounds like a slog, but it doesn't have to be. We have a great video up on the channel with some helpful tips to gain some quick XP that you might enjoy, so if you're struggling to level up, definitely go check that out. As with the previous two, make sure you're completing any conversation quest from Sebastian. At level 28, you'll receive the quest in the Shadow of the Relic. It's by completing this quest you'll unlock Avada Kedavra, the infamous Killing Curse. If for some reason you choose the wrong option during this quest to learn the curse, don't worry, you're given the choice after the story is complete to go back to Sebastian and ask him to learn it. I'll admit, it's a mistake I made, but I was glad to know my choice wasn't forever taken away from me. Avada Kedavra is an interesting spell, and by interesting, I mean downright OP. There's no trick to this. Point and shoot, and your enemy is done for. Like the other curses, it does have its own mastery point, but when I read the skill tip, I couldn't believe what I was reading. When you slay an enemy with the killing curse, this point slays all other cursed enemies. Yes, you heard that right. Everyone who is cursed is instantly just gone, wiped off the map. You starting to see the importance of the dark arts spell tree now? 
Now you have all three curses at your disposal. We've gone through several talents and it all ties together, but it can be a lot to try and manage. So let's look back at the whole tree collectively and really nail down some recommendations. Again, keep in mind, the goal of this tree is effectively spreading curses amongst all of your enemies. Up to four talents can be spent to allow four other spells to curse targets. Stupefy, Expelliarmus, Flipendo, and Arresto Memento. Using these in your regular spell rotation is a recipe for quick curse spread. We wouldn't recommend all four as there are more effective ways to spread, but pick a couple talents that correlate to spells that fit your playstyle, or just avoid these altogether and save your points for other talents. Spending a point in Blood Curse will allow you to share damage between all cursed targets. Again, effective as you work your way through enemies within a group. As you'll be dealing damage, don't forget to spend a point in Crucio Mastery, as this will release projectiles from your cursed target that will spread curses to other targets. And we really want to make sure those curses are active as long as possible, so go ahead and spend a point in Enduring Curse as well. Flipping to Imperio, you'll want to put a point in Imperio Mastery, allowing your controlled target to curse others. And I mean, it's a free curse spread, so why not? If you find yourself struggling to maintain health, you can slap a point in Curse Sapper, which will restore a little bit of health for every cursed enemy that you defeat. This isn't so much a critical point on lower difficulties, but has been known to save us a few times on hard, as you can get yourself into some pretty sticky combat situations. Finally, to seal the deal and put a cap on the Dark Arts build, spend an ever-critical point in Avada Kedavra Mastery, which allows you to clear out all cursed targets with the King of Curses, Avada Kedavra. This tree is absolutely nuts, and once I had all three curses and spell points in place, I almost felt like I was cheating the game, but man does it feel great. With all this power at your fingertips, there are few enemies that can stand in your way, and if they try, well, that's their problem. We hope you found our quick dark arts guide helpful. If you want more content like this in your feeds, all you need to do is drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. We're full gas on Hogwarts legacy content and we'll have plenty more coming out in the weeks and months ahead. And we'd love to have you along for the ride. I also want to invite you to join the legacy gaming community on Discord. We recently reworked our entire server. So if you're looking for a place to hang out, win free prizes, talk about great games like Hogwarts legacy and group up with friends, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.